Hello, everyone. Let's continue with the discussion on relations. So, relations. Let's consider two sets, P and Q. Again, as in last class, and in the same example, P is ABC, a set of three elements, and Q is a set of two elements, one and two. We studied partition product. So, A cross B, A, A B cross Q is a set of all elements which are ordered pairs from P to Q. So, uh, the ordered pairs would look something like this. We had two elements in P, uh, three elements in P, two elements in Q, P cross Q contains six elements. Now, relations is said to be a relation from P to Q is a subset of this Cartesian product of P and Q. So if I call R is my relation, R between P and Q, So I can represent this R to be a set, which is a subset of another set, P, and P cross Q, which is a Cartesian product of P, Q, the P and Q. So R is a subset of Cartesian product of P and Q. This is how you define relations in maths. Now, we know that there are, here there are, N of P is equal to three. And N of Q is equal to two. We know that n of p cross q is equal to 6. We also know from the last class that if e, n of e is equal to small m and b is a subset of a, then how many subsets of a can you form? Number of subsets of a is equal to 2 to the power m. So there can be 2 to the power m different values of b. Here, r is a subset of p cross q and p cross q contains in a general term, let's consider this p, this is small q, this is pq. So in general, r will have 2 to the power pq number of values or there can be 2 to the power pq relations formed okay now we've studied what exactly is relations and we can have many relations formed if we just have two sets p and q this number is always finite in nature. To give a better clarity, let's consider P. Again, same values E, B, and C. But instead of representing now in roster form, I'm trying to represent it in an arrow diagram or visual representation, which is a visual representation, visual form. So I've taken an oval. This oval represents my set P. The three elements are represented by three dots. Q is another set which contains two elements, one comma two. I'm representing set Q by another oval shape. The two elements inside it, one and two. If I have P cross Q and um, I'm considering the first two values. I can represent these two values in this visual representation as such. A line joining A and 1 represents this first ordered pair. A line joining A and 2 represents this second ordered pair. So the two ordered pairs of this P cross Q partition product in graphical or in arrow uh, diagram is represented by two lines with an arrow pointing towards 
Q. The arrow is always pointing towards the second value, thereby giving it a direction. Similarly, if I consider other elements, which are again ordered pairs of the Cartesian product P cross Q, those will be P comma one, B comma two, C comma one, and C comma two. In this arrow diagram, you can represent them in respective lines, B to one, B to two, C to one, and C to two. Each with its own arrow. Now, we know that R is a subset of P cross Q. So instead of representing all of these elements, let us consider R to be equal to certain values, a subset, a proper subset, certain values of these ordered pairs. That's it. I'm considering two values in a relation R. So how will I represent this relation R in graphical representation? I've considered R to be a set of two values, A comma one and B comma two. A and Q, the first values are A and B. The P's uh, elements are A, B and C. Q's elements are one and two. A line representing the relations. First relation is A1, so A to 1. Second relation is B2, so B to 2. Both lines should have arrows pointing towards the second value of your ordered pair. Second value of ordered pairs are 1 and 2, respectively. So the arrows are pointing towards 1 and 2 in your uh, arrow diagram. So now that we know how to draw an arrow diagram, we should be able to find the set or write the set if we know the uh, arrow diagram. So this is my first, this is an arrow diagram. So this example is um, available with you. I'm changing the values of each other. And I've drawn lines as such. Someone asks you to write the relation from P to Q. It's by default understood that the ordered pair, order pairs will be formed from uh, P to Q because the arrows are pointing towards elements of Q. So let's write the ordered pairs first. There are four lines, means four ordered pairs. These ordered pairs are one, two, comma, two to three. That means two comma three, three to four, three comma four, and four to five. If you put it in a set, this is the value of your R. And R is a subset of P cross Q or R is a relation. You have a relation R. Sorry about that. You have a relation R from set P to set Q. This is how you call it. Hope this is understood. Uh, if you want an explanation with further examples, just let me know in the comments. Next point is, if you have relation, now what are, there are certain terminologies related to relation. I'll explain the terminologies based on this example of ours, and then we can go with the generalization. So here, if you observe, 
in there are four ordered pairs out of your cube which is your second set only four values are included in the ordered pairs two values are not included in the ordered pairs based on the relation that you are considering these four values which are included are said to be images of their respective values uh, respective elements in p so 2 is the image of 1 these are the first order pair 3 is the image of Two. Four is the image of three and five is the image of four. So the second element in the ordered pair of relation R from P to Q from set P to set Q, this second element is the image of first element. It's called the image of first element. From this uh, example, we have we've understood that there are four images. Now, if you form a set of these four images, if you form, if you write them in the form of a set, a set of all the images, two, three, four, and five, then this set is said to be a range. It has a specific name to it, range. Okay. This range is specific to this relation R. That's why it's also called range of the relation R. Now, the elements of P, the elements of P, they form domain. Domain is another set, which can, which is the set of all the first elements. The first elements are elements of P, first elements of the ordered pairs. Now, coincidentally, all the elements of P are, belong to certain order, uh, certain ordered pairs of relation R. Say, instead, we had an element 5 over here. Now this 5 element is, does not belong to any of the ordered pairs of your relation R. So will that be considered as a domain? No. Because domain is a set of all the first elements of the ordered pairs in a relation R from set A to set B. So you can consider domain as a set of 1, 2, 3, and 4 because these are first elements of your ordered pairs. First elements of your ordered pairs, 1, 2, 3, and 4, or all these elements which has uh, which are connected to the lines in set P. Okay. So till now you've studied three terminologies. What is an image? What is a range? a domain and the fourth part is codomain. Now codomain means all the elements of set Q. It does not distinguish whether the elements are uh, part of your uh, ordered pairs or not. All the elements from 2 to 7 will be considered as elements of codomain. I hope these terminologies related to relations are understood. Now, next we will uh, study, the, uh, we, as we observed over here, your range is a subset of codomain. 
range is a subset of Podomi. Now, in the previous example that we've considered here, here both the elements one and two are members of your ordered pairs. So here, just for understanding the concept, you can say one is the image of two, uh, one is the image of A. Two is the image of B. Range is a set of values one and two. Who domain is also a set of values one and two. Domain is a set of A and B. Okay. The relation R can be represented in a both rooster form or roster form, sorry, or set builder form. You can also represent it in uh, arrow diagram, in the form of arrow diagram. Now here in the previous question, you represented relation in terms of arrow diagram and in terms of roster form. If you wanted to represent it in terms of set, in terms of set builder form, how will that be? We know that it is uh, a combination of sets from uh, elements from sets P and Q. So let's call small p belongs to capital P and small q belongs to capital Q. Now, we know that R is a relation means R is, an, is, a, set, uh, is a set of ordered pairs. So P comma, comma Q, what else do you know about this? Such that we know that P belongs to capital P. We also know that Q belongs to capital Q, but we're not supposed to consider all the ordered pairs because then it would be Cartesian product. There should be some relation between P and Q. If you observe, P is the first values. P will have values of one, two, three, and four because P means your domain and Q is your range, two, three, four, and five. One and two, your Q value is one greater than first value. Your Q value is one greater than first value. Four, three plus one, five, four plus one. So can you say that your Q is equal to P plus one? Yes, this is true. Observe P and Q. P is a set of five elements, one, two, three, four, five, and Q is a set of uh, six elements, two to seven. Now, we know that from this relation, Q is equal to P plus Q. The value of six should be five plus one. So five and six should also form an ordered pair, but they are not forming an ordered pair in this relation. The relation contains only four elements. So there should be a restriction on it that P is less than equals to four. Okay, here, uh, unlike sets, we need not mention that P belongs to a natural number and Q belongs to a natural number because P and Q have specific values. They belong to set, sets A and Q, capital P and capital Q respectively. So capital P in the definition of capital P, while defining the set capital P, you might mention whether they are natural numbers or not. But here, you need not mention them. Just mentioning that they belongs to the set P and small q belongs to set Q is sufficient. Now, the last point is the relation R from first set to second set is sometimes also represented as a relation on P. So it's just a notation that you'll find in your questions that relation used this long phrase relation R from set A to set B. See, instead of two different sets, this is the same set from set A to set E. Then this can also be represented as relation on A. 
That means A cross A is the odd, is the Cartesian product that you're considering, and your relation R is a subset of this Cartesian product A cross A. Let's consider uh, an example for this. A is a set of three elements, A, B, and C. Um, for simplicity, I'm considering two elements, A and B. N of A is equal to two. A cross A. In set builder form would be set of all instead of small a, let's consider x, comma x, such that x belongs to a. So a cross a, this has two elements, two into two, which is four elements. You should have four elements, a comma a, a comma b, b comma a, and b comma b. How did we come up with this? Let's redraw A over here. The first set A over here and the second set A over here. First element by underline. The first element can have values either A or B. So when you have the value of A as the first element, your second element can have either value uh, A or B. It can have either value A or B. Second element B, you can have the value of A and B as the second elements. In short, N of A cross A is equal to 4. Now we know that R is a subset of A cross A. And the four elements, R can have 2 to the power 4 values. So R can be any subset of these four elements, uh, A, 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 B, B, A, and B. I hope this is understood. In the next class, we'll discuss about functions. Thank you.